Last week, we destroyed the Mississippi school. We beat them pretty bad, and now we're falling on the season going into our bye week. This week, we're going to check on two more Mississippi schools. Out there in Jackson, Mississippi. That's right. So, I guess you can call this a rivalry game. But, for the most part, I wouldn't. But it's the Mississippi Valley State Delta Devils versus the Jackson State Tigers. And what an interesting game this is. Jackson State is winless on the season. They're 0-3. Surprisingly, though, the Mississippi Valley State Delta Devils come in at 2-2. So we have an interesting matchup, but for the most part, Mississippi Valley State is going to be favored to win this game. And there goes Peter Blaylock, the quarterback. Rough start to the season, two touchdowns, three interceptions, but he's approaching 900 yards passing. But Mississippi Valley State, they like to run the ball. As a matter of fact, they like to run the option. And look at that pass right there by Brian Silva. A bad pass leads to an interception, and that's Fleming getting his first pick of the season. So here goes Blaylock finding his target, his big tight end, going up the left side right there on second and three. Peter Blaylock later on in the drive, takes the option, keep it, and goes into the end zone. Touchdown, Mississippi Valley State Delta Devils. Second and 10. Look at Brian Silva using his legs to get the first down and much, much more. Great run there by the Jackson State quarterback. So here he goes again using the legs, not even looking downfield to see who's open. And he gets close to the first down this time. On third and two, here he goes again. This time he gets hit in the backfield. This Mississippi Valley State Delta Devil defense is nasty. And that was Fleming, the man that had the interception. So on second and five. The Delta Devils got the ball, and there goes Joe Randall running in the traffic and breaking it outside and getting the first down. That was an excellent run. First and 10, though, here goes Kyle Crum. Crumming through traffic, finds a crease up the left side, breaks a tackle, looking like Clinton Porters from way back in the day. Touchdown, Delta Devils. What a run that right there by Kyle Crum. That was absolutely amazing. Runs in the traffic, takes it to the outside, and it's off to the races. The Mississippi Valley State Delta Devils are all over the Jackson State Tigers right now, leading 14 and nothing. So they're back on offense once again. Blaylock went off there to pass. This time he's using his legs to run, and he gets the first down. The Delta Devils going strong with the option plays, and there goes Blaylock again on the keeper. Get the first down and more. They're approaching the red zone, it looks like it. Here he goes again, another option play. Peter Playlock going up the left side and gets the first down. They are dominating at the line of scrimmage. Peter Blaylock, this time he pitches it to Joe Randall and he goes into the end zone with these. Touchdown, Mississippi Valley State. And now the Jackson State Tigers have to pass the sticks. So we're going to the third quarter. The score is 24 0 Delta Devils. And look at this pass. It's deflected. And that's caught. John Jenkins goes into the end zone with the high step. Touchdown, Jackson State. Sometimes it's better to be lucky than good. With that, the Tigers decide to go for two. They convert it with Adam Price, the running back. And now the lead is 24 8. So here goes Jackson State once again. Brian Silver on the quarterback draw. He does a spin move and goes up the gut. 20 and inside the 10 he goes. What a run there by Brian Silver. Third and goal. Silver back to pass and he's set by Jeff McIntosh. Jeff McIntosh stops the Jackson State offense. Jackson State have to kick a field goal and the lead is now 24-11 Delta Devils. So now the Tigers are looking to drive late in the game. They have to get something going. Here goes a toss play to Adam Price, and he takes it up the left side and goes into the end zone. Touchdown, Jackson State. So now the lead's been cut to six, and now the Delta Devil offense have to get something going, and look at this run by Peter Blaylock. What a run right there up the right side. Second and ten. He runs in the traffic, and then Joe Randall takes it to the outside, goes up the gut, and he's going in for a touchdown, and that right there is the ball game. The Delta Devils did not convert on that two-point conversion, but they walk away with the victory over the Jackson State Tigers. Jackson State is now 0-4. Mississippi Valley State is now 3-2. 
So now we go up the Orangeburg, South Carolina. Before we do though, here goes Tom Smith on the NCAA history list. 321 receptions in his career. NCAA record, just like I told y'all, against Syracuse. But it wasn't such a big day for Tennessee State as they take on the South Carolina State Bulldogs as Ron Starks gets picked off by Vince Barnes and he takes that thing back for a pick six. What a disaster of a start for the Tennessee State Tigers. The last time we saw them, they was getting mauled by Syracuse on offense. And there goes Rodney Starks getting sacked by Eric Bishop. So now South Carolina State has the ball. There goes Ray Hunter taking it up the right side. Gets the first down and much, much more. A big first down there for the Bulldogs of South Carolina State. First and 10 at the 42. There he goes. Aaron Hall taking the ball up the right side. Breaks away from a defender. He goes into the end zone. A touchdown for the South Carolina State Bulldogs. And now they're up 14 to nothing. This time though, here comes Tennessee State. Rodney Starks is intercepted once again. This time, he's picked off by Josh McDonald. Another pick six for Rod Starks. He's now thrown five pick sixes in two games. Ray Hunter going deep in the end zone, and he finds that looks like John Gaddis. Yes, that was. A 36-yard touchdown pass, and the South Carolina State Bulldogs are now up 28 to nothing. What a disaster of a game for the Tennessee State Tigers. The team that's been dominating the MEAC. And look at Ray Hunter once again. This time he's going deep, but this time he's intercepted by Campbell. He takes it out the end zone, gets tackled near the 20-yard line. The Tigers did absolutely nothing on this drive, though. So on second and 10, there goes Rod Starks once again, making a pass deep downfield. But this time it's caught by Tom Smith. What a catch there by the greatest hands in NCAA history. But unfortunately for Tom, this will be his only catch of the game. Vince Barnes and that Bulldog secondary shut him down. Rod Starks this time is intercepting and guess who it is? Vince Barnes taking it back. He almost had a pick six once again. His second interception of the day. This man has been shut down all game. Third and two. It's an end around to Seth McKenzie, and he takes it inside the five-yard line, tackled around the two-yard line. So then here we go again. This time they give it to Aaron Hall, and he cruises into the end zone for his second touchdown of the game. It was 38 to nothing at the half. So here's a fourth and sixth situation. There goes Hunter finding McKenzie once again. He gets tackled at the 10-yard line. That drive resulted into a field goal, so it's 41 nothing South Carolina State. And Vince Barnes gets his third pick of the game. Both quarterbacks for Tennessee State combined for five turnovers. Vince Barnes was accountable for three of them. And eventually, South Carolina State scored again, making the final score 48 to nothing. And now the Tennessee State Tigers are on a three-game losing streak. South Carolina State with a huge win. So let's look at the rest of the scores in the SWAC. It was only three games. You saw Mississippi Valley State beat Jackson State 30-18. Alabama A&M get their first win of the season over Grambling State 36-25. And Florida A&M squeaked by Arkansas Pine Bluff with a 17-13 victory, improving a 3-2. Meanwhile, over there at the MEAC, Morgan State loses to North Carolina A&T. Hampton beat Army in overtime. I'm trying to cover some more Hampton games. And then, of course, you saw South Carolina State goose egg the Tennessee State Tigers. So, Zach Richardson wins Offensive Player of the Week in the SWAC with his performance. 10 receptions, 251 yards, and a touchdown. Charlie Oliver wins Defensive Player of the Week for the SWAC. Seven tackles, a forced fumble, and two fumble recoveries as the Alabama AM and Bulldogs pick up their first win of the season. That's big right there considering they haven't had a big start to the season at all. They're now 1-4. They're looking to improve after that. As for Grambling, things continue to get worse for the Tigers of Grandfam. Meanwhile, out there in the MEAC, Albert Williams, 42 carries, 209 yards and two touchdowns, wins Offensive MEAC Player of the Week. And, of course, Vince Barnes, the cornerback for South Carolina State, Three interceptions, and one of those interceptions went for a pick six. 
literally the first play of the game for Tennessee State. That is an absolute mess. Tennessee State looks so bad right now. So let's look at the top 25. So you see the Alabama State Hornets are now number two in the country. The Tennessee Volunteers lost, and it looks like LSU lost as well, because now North Carolina State are at number three. Tennessee lost to Auburn last week, 37 to 14. Went all the way down, well not all the way down, but they moved down six spots to number eight, and then LSU's right behind them. They lost to Georgia. They fell to number nine. Miami comes in at 10. What a crazy start this is to the season. A lot of upsets. And because of the way we started off this season, we are now in a national championship spot. Like if, we, if the season was over now, we would be playing in the BCS national championship game. So we got to make sure we keep winning, man. We got to make sure we keep winning. And not only winning, but winning impressively. Because I think from this point forward, this is the only way that we're going to make it. I could see us winning a big game, like winning big, and then we drop because somebody played a better team or a team that was ranked. And that ain't fair in my opinion. But I know for sure, if we do lose a game, we'll probably fall like 10, 20 spots. I can definitely see that. Like when we lost to Southern last year. So here goes the Heisman watch. Gene Speedy Singleton is still number one on the list. And after that performance versus Alcorn State, how could he not be? Four touchdowns, 236 yards rushing. He's averaging over 200 a game. So Greg Clark, the Wolf Pack running back of, South, of North Carolina State, excuse me, is in second place. He's having a pretty good season too. This list is pretty diverse too. SEC, ACC, Big Ten, and of course, SWAC. So there goes Daryl Adams, the wide receiver for Virginia Tech, the red shirt senior. He's having a really good season so far. He might win a Belitnikov. Kevin Demon, the wide receiver for South Carolina, and Mike Kelly, the wide receiver for Purdue. So let's get into some recruiting news. So here goes Anthony Thomas, a five-star cornerback that I'm trying to get. We are third on his list right now, and we're trying to move up past Penn State and Michigan, but hopefully we can get him. The middle linebacker, Josh Coleman, all the way out there from Newark, California, clearly wants to stay on the West Coast. No matter how good we was performing, we just wasn't moving up on his list. So we decided to part ways with him. But clearly he wants to stay on the West Coast. Henry Ortiz, though, we're moving up on his list. We're only battling LSU, and this is a tight end that we seriously need. If we get him, we're going to change up how we run our offense. Tony Swan, he has some discipline issues. But this might change. I might put some points on him, considering what the rest of the recruits do. So don't count him out just yet. The next guy, Joe McCowan. I believe we could be in the driver's seat to get this cat. Florida's a definitely a pipeline state, and we're battling Oklahoma to get him. But I feel confident that we'll get him before the season is over. Next guy is Matt Rackley. Another cat that we might have to part ways with because of the discipline issues. So the NCAA interest meter is almost full. And we can't take the risk of taking any more players for poor discipline. The next guy is a, another wide receiver, Sheldon Green. All the way out there in California. So he has poor potential and poor discipline. Another cat that I might reconsider. Because wide receivers are something we definitely need. I'm tired of receivers that are always dropping passes. Brad Jones is another guy that we're trying to get, but again, he has poor discipline. And he moved us down on our list, so now we gotta fight Miami and Florida just to get him. Not really confident about that one. Josh Jones is a cat that we're definitely going after. With the departures of Jason Moore and Cedric McNeil coming soon, we're looking for the next two guys to take over on those spots. Jones is in the pipeline state too. Ken Williams. We had to sacrifice somebody and I regret doing this one. The man runs a 4'5", 6'5", 200 pounds. He could get off that line really fast. Daniel Hayes, I think we're in the driver's seat to get this cat. He's from Jacksonville, Alabama. A lot of people forget that we got a Jacksonville in our state. And he has average potential and average discipline. I can work with that. And then last but not least, Scott Johnson, 
Another one that I fumbled the bag on. Four, five, six speed. Poor potential, but good discipline. Yeah, I regret that, man. We should have got him. But anyway, join us next time. We're going to one of my favorite cities in the country. That's right. Tallahassee, Florida. We're going to take on the Florida a and Rattlers and Fort Brad Memorial Stadium. And we are ranked number two. A number two team in the country going into a stadium in Tallahassee that's not named Dope Campbell Stadium. See y'all down in the tally. <laughs>